Hey everybody, this is Jo and I'm coming to you from my Houston, Texas garden and I'm in zone 9A and I just made a video a couple of days ago but I'm really making this one uh, to memorialize this beautiful climbing iceberg rose. Um, it is probably about 20 years old and um, it has never ever looked prettier than it does right now. And unfortunately, because my dining room, which is there, is two inches lower than the rest of my house, I have uh, foundation repair people coming and they're gonna dig up, I don't even know, they're gonna put a, like a big hole here and I don't know what they're gonna do. But this climbing iceberg, which is really just this one stalk, I just don't, I don't see that surviving. When I cut it off, I'm gonna cut it and dig it up and cross my fingers. I don't have a lot of hope for it. Um, this one is a pink rose. I've lost the tag and I think it's pale pink. It's small enough, I think maybe I could cut it here and move it and it would survive. This is Mrs. B.R. Cant. I'm hoping they won't get that far. The dining room ends about there. So I'm hoping they won't get that far. And then they're gonna mess with the front of the house that way and I'm gonna probably I don't know what'll happen. That's a mutabilis rose you can see blooming right there. And that's gonna get messed up too. So I'm just saying goodbye, adios. And I'm really sorry we're gonna cut you down in five days. So poor climbing iceberg, but I have bought something to put in there. So I have mentioned before my favorite YouTube gardener is, uh, her channel is called Gulf Coast Butterfly Gardening, and her name is Rachel, and she has a Cecile Brunner Rose, and and it's amazing. And I never had room for another giant rose, but now that I think I'm gonna lose that white iceberg, I happened to see, I had never seen this rose before, and I've just seen it on her channel, and um, I was at my regular little garden center, and I, this thing is huge, look how big how big that is so I feel like this thing it's already you know leafing out I feel like this has a, a good chance of surviving and I like the way it's in sort of a fan so I can plant that right up against the wall and hopefully it will fan out flat and that would be really cool so um, so I spend a lot of time just copying what awesome Rachel does and so here I am copying this too hello Rachel um, so the other thing is, this is uh, a pink rose, um, and climbing iceberg is white, and my house, although it's really tan colored, you can see that it doesn't, it doesn't show up, that white doesn't show up very well, because it's very light, and this is sort of a light tan. And so I think that while I'm taking it out and I'm gonna replace it, I picked something that is a darker color, so it will show up. Um, as I, you know, as I drive up the driveway, I'll see it more, more easily. Um, I have been asked a couple of times, you know, here and there, what kind of things I um, fertilize with. So these were sitting out on the driveway, so I thought I would look at them. So when I'm planting something, I like a couple of different things. This is 001, you can see the numbers on there. This is very mild. It really is something that I use when I'm, I will use it on little seedlings like that. It's good for sort of root growth. Um, and I will plant, I will use it if I'm um, planting something in the ground, I'll use it the first couple of weeks. Um, I try to fertilize every Friday during the growing season, not during the winter. But um, I will use this for a couple of weeks on a new um, planting I'm trying to settle in. After that, I will use just a general 6126. I just pick something that's very general um, for my flower pots that I that I um, fertilize. I'm planting things in the ground. This is kind of the same thing, right, as that one, sort of. Um, it's very mild, and I put this in the bottom of a hole, um, anything I'm planting new. This is basically, right, it says on there, concentrated compost. And it's, uh, I sort of swear by it. It's expensive, but it's nice. It's very convenient. You just sprinkle it on the surface or in the hole. These you have to mix with water, and it's a little bit of a pain, and they smell terrible. Here, if I'm just sprinkling out in the, out in the yard, I'll also use 
um, this is just easy to sprinkle. It kind of depends on how lazy I'm feeling, um, whether I'm going to sprinkle something or whether I'm going to use liquid. It's I think it's much more um, easily um, accessed by the plants if you're using um, a liquid uh, fertilizer than something like this. It's got to you know break down and, and sink into the um, into the soil. All of these are this is liquid seaweed. All of these are. Um, are environmentally friendly. They're not full of um, chemicals, which is why I like them. The other thing I do around my roses, and I just sprinkle this um, a couple of times a month, a couple of times a year, um, which is called Rose Glow. And you could use this really for anything, but this is what I do. I just use it as a granular, and I have a little cup in there, and uh, I just scoop. It's like one scoop for a small one two scoops for a medium one, medium rose, three scoops for a big rose, and then the giant climbers, I tend to put four or five scoops. Um, I just do that every, mostly when they're blooming. So probably six months of the year, I'll put this out, I'll just sprinkle it. And I think it makes a difference. I've had prettier roses since I started using that. I used to never, um, I used to never fertilize anything, so. Now, on these seedlings, some of them were starting to look a little bit yellow it just doesn't, you know, it's about a half day sun over here on the driveway. And um, I'm going to redo a lot of these, uh, sort of a second sowing of these. But I did make a really weak feed. I used about half of what I should norm would normally use of this um, and just sprinkled it, uh, just poured it a little bit on these seedlings um, and hoping that they will maybe green up and have a little bit more vigorous growth. So I'm getting ready to plant a tree next week. And uh, we, I'm going to put this Happy Frog soil conditioner in the hole and around the hole um, when we put that tree in. I never pass up the opportunity to improve the soil. If I dig a hole, I'm going to put either homemade compost if I have any, or bought compost if I have some of that, or even easier, I'm going to sprinkle this in, in and around the hole um, to um, improve the soil because you never pass that opportunity up when you have dug a hole to put something really good in the bottom of it. You're not going to dig it up years later and to improve the soil. So do it while you've got the hole in the ground. So this is what's going to go with my new tree. Now there was, oh, I was going to show you at my house in my neighborhood it's heavy trash day and we went on a nice little walk and um <laughs> and i walked past this on the side of the street and i thought "Ooh, free flower pot and it was full of leaves and so i drove back around after our walk and picked it up in my car and when i picked it up all the way off the ground I realized it actually had a hole in it because I hadn't noticed it with the leaves in it and I thought well I'm still taking it it's still a still a flower pot and so then today at the nursery I found this it's called a fabric planter and I figure if I don't drag it around it's not such a terrible hole if I don't move the pot too much um, I think I can tuck this down in here and go ahead and use it as a flower pot and um, so I was feeling pretty smug about having found that <laughs> the day after I got this off the side of the road. A couple of pretty little things. Now, the other day I called these on the video, I called these snowdrops. They're not, they're snowflakes. And, um, and they just look so cute. I just love them. And this is the best little patch I have. And then I've got a few things. I don't know about you guys, but I, had bright ideas about putting different roses in here and then um, adding roses and then I ordered one forgot I ordered it ordered a different one and they both came in the same box and I was like these are from uh, Antiques Rose Emporium I ordered them online and it was like oh I forgot about that I wonder where I'm gonna put that six foot tall rose so now I'm sort of working it out the reason I picked these two roses is because I'm trying to add pale 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 yellow to the garden and also a really really deep dark not red a deep deep purpley pink rose and so the first one I chose that I this is the one I really forgot that I 
bought. This is this is this is bad gardener, right? When you've bought things, forgotten you bought them. This is called Delta Gamma Heritage, and it's got a it's sort of cup shaped. It's got a lot of petals, and it is a pale pale yellow, and it can kind of go peach here and there, kind of go cream, but it's generally yellow. So that's going to go here in front of uh, Excellence von Schubert, which is getting ready to flower. It's it's I didn't get to it. You can see I normally would have probably uh, trimmed it here, pruned it here, but I forgot. To, I didn't get to it. And so now I've got this big long thing. So I'm going to let it bloom and then I'll prune it. It's hard. Um, but I can keep this. It will normally be five or six feet tall. I can keep it probably trimmed to about four or five feet and then Excellence von Schubert's probably six or seven feet. So it'll be in front of that. So the other rose that I bought, the one that I remembered buying, is over here, and it's the deep, deep purple. Purpley, pinky, but not red. Here's some like that. This is the rose that's really, this is um, old blush, and it is really, um, doing beautifully and that's old blush back there and it can take a little shade um, which is good this is under a big uh, crepe myrtle so it can take some shade and there's mrs. doubtfire hello oh hello thought you were gonna show us your belly oh and this is oh I guess I showed this already this week this is um, 290 pink buttons and it's just look how many little little buds there are I'm so excited and I can't walk past Clotilde Super without showing. Isn't that gorgeous? Mm. Love it. I had uh, a Caldwell, uh, no, it's a Rockwell sesquicentennial rose. I have one here, one here, and one died, and so I've replaced it. It's just been such, oh, here and here and there. It's been such a great rose, and I don't know why one of them died. And so I went ahead and, and bought another one. So this rose I've already put in the ground. Here's the one I did remember. This one is called Great Western, and it should be pretty big too, so I'll be able to see it from, that's my kitchen window. So I ought to be able, to, it'll get five or six feet tall, and I should be able to see it from my kitchen window. And then I've moved some things out here. Um, I moved Salvia Lucantha from over here and put them over here um, and to give some, that grass some more space. And then, got to show you my geraniums. Goodness gracious. I mean, they're just, they're prettier now than when I bought them um, a year ago in the nursery. And I don't, I'm not usually able to say that. Usually I get it and it doesn't look good as what I, the day I bought it. But these things have just been so pretty and so happy. And I just love, I love the color. Well, I hope you guys have a great weekend and uh, a great week next week. Oh, I was going to show you the color I kind of think Great Western Rose is going to be is sort of a purpley, not quite, it's like a deep purple but leaning red. It's going to be cool. I'm really excited about it. Well, all right. Y'all take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>